Alright, so truth be told, this took a long time to film. So starting off with making these little prosthetics, I'm using air dry clay. Taking it piece by piece apart, rolling it between my hands and flattening it to the best of my abilities using literally whatever is around me. I will say, if I could go back, I would like to kind of put out the edges a little bit better as they were a little bit too abrupt for my liking. Yeah, let's go with that. I even actually ended up using the mascara I'm going to be using for this look as a rolling pin. Shout out to Milk Makeup for making such a rolling pin-esque mascara. Once I've got one layer down, I'm going to start on the second, making it the same basic shape, but a little bit smaller, obviously, because you want it to kind of digress. Maybe taper is the right word. Adjusting it by manipulating the basic shape that I have, pulling it wider, and then pressing it into my surface. I am working on a mobile surface. This is just like a baking sheet, kind of like a cutting board almost. You definitely can't do this on any surface but I find that it works for me because I can move it wherever the fuck I want. When it mostly gets to the third layer, but I do believe I already did this in some of them for the second layers, I made two portions to it and built it up from there. I made quite a few of these, I just ended up using the entire case of the air dry clay that I showed you in the beginning. Leave those two dry. I left mine overnight just so that they were completely dry and it was a lot easier to paint them. And then came back obviously for the paint job. I found the best way to paint these were starting from the inner color of each layer. For example, the first layer consisted of a light and dark blue. So I started off with the lightest blue. Ignore the darker part for now. That doesn't exist yet. Um, <laughs> anyways, I'm detailing around the layers and then adding a little bit more sloppily painting the rest. Then with a darker blue, I'm using that on the perimeter. Blending that out with a disposable sponge, just like a makeup sponge kind of thing. Adding a little bit more and blending it out further. The second layer consists of yellow and green, and the yellow is going to be what I'm going to call the sloppy layer. Okay, that, that's what we're calling it now. <laughs> Detail the inner portion and then sloppily put on the rest. And then use the green to detail the perimeter alongside a sponge once again. Don't worry too much if it gets a little bit messier than intended. I always go back at the end to fix anything up that's really, really done wrong or come in with a piece of toilet paper or whatever kind of paper to get rid of any actual prominent color.
and then finally orange and red. This time around I filled each top layer entirely with orange. And sort of dab dab dabbing some red and then blending it out further. As you can see each one of these I'm, <laughs> I'm literally coming in with a different piece every single time I show you that and that's just to show that like I did multiple pieces which you will see at the end and you all already saw at the beginning but I did want to show you multiple pieces and how to kind of do them not just show you the same piece because things can get incredibly repetitive when you're looking at a screen for 12 minutes non-stop you know. I created some very small pieces for my hand to which I strictly had two layers onto it, a two-tone blue layer and then another layer that I added a wash of yellow over. And then a very small amount of red to the center. It was very, very thin, like skinny legend here. Onto the makeup itself though, first I'm starting out by mapping out each of the sections that I need to get an idea of where I'm going to be putting each of these. I mean originally I made these with a portion of my face in mind, but this is actually like putting those thoughts into action, you know, right, you know. Before continuing with the body makeup though, I wanted to go into my eye makeup as it is a pretty fast tutorial if you even want to call it that, tutorial in a tutorial. Try not to take away from the rest of the look. I'm going to be starting out with my base of a NYX Jabai pencil and milk and continue on with Sand Dollar from Makeup Geek as my transition shade. And then Love Plus from Sugar Pill over the lid. and then further blending though again with sand dollar back and forth back and forth until I have my desired look. I carried that below my bottom lash line as always my symmetry. And a red liner added to my waterline and tight line. I add some mascara to my top and bottom lashes and for the face and body paint I'm going lilac because I lie like it. <laughs> Do you really think I would make a tutorial and not have a really bad pun in there? Anyways, putting that everywhere except those places I marked off as adhesive sticks a lot better to skin than it does to paint areas. It just kind of takes up the paint and doesn't actually stick to the skin below it obviously because you have something in the middle there. As I said I am doing this on my face but I'm also carrying it down my body past my neck and to a little bit on my chest and yes I am actually wearing a shirt here still. You little perverts. And then it's quickly time to do brows. I'm taking an inky blue and quickly filling those in, filling in any sparse areas around the lilac with a finer detailing brush. and starting to blend the eye look even better with now what is the dry face paint. I found just like most things with me, it got a little bit too intense so I came in with a sponge with the lilac still on it and kind of just dab 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 a little bit more just to get a little bit better of a seamless finish. 
once everything is dry, it's time for the liquid latex. I'm going to be using liquid latex for this, but any skin safe adhesive will work. Isn't that a mouthful? I'm applying it to the naked parts of my face and then to the back of each prosthetic. Doing one last fill with the lilac. Again, I just really lilac it. <laughs> I'm adding my wig on and then the lip color again, an inky blue to tie in the brows, but make it a little bit darker, you know. It definitely came off a lot more cool tone on camera versus my brows, kind of like a warmer blue or like a baby blue. This in person, this was very, very similar in comparison to my brows. And that is it for today's video, and I hope you guys enjoyed. Bye-bye.